Bear Friendly. It's me, the Necrofessor, and we're gonna hit it off with another plague news. And it's actually not gonna be entirely about the coronavirus this time, even though it's everyone's favorite waifu nowadays. So how's your flaming dumpster fire of a year treating you? It feels like it's been a little while. So I did that thing where I just randomly fell on Google and typed in bubonic plague just to see what's happening nowadays. And uh, here's a few articles that popped up, and uh, I'm just going to read them off to you. Now, there are a few things uh, to note. I did uh, read some of this ahead of time, and there are some names and locations that I know I'm going to butcher the pronunciation for. So we're going to have some fun with that. The first article is from Fox News. Uh, New Mexico man dies of plague. State officials. Uh, the first such fatality in the state since 2015. What they're trying to say is that a New Mexico man died of the bubonic plague just recently. And so, the question is, why? What happened? Well, we know that uh, he must have been infected by dealing with some sort of a livestock or an animal that had been infected with a bubonic plague-infected flea. So, let's read on. Because New Mexico, even though it's the first recorded death since 2015, the infection rate for bubonic plague in New Mexico is actually uh, a little higher than you might think. A New Mexico man has died of septicemic plague, officials with the New Mexico Department of Health announced on Friday. The man, who is not publicly identified, was in his late 20s and lived in Rio Arriba County. That is the most New Mexico name I've ever heard for a county. His death marks the first such fatality in the state since 2015, and the second human plague case overall this year, officials in this press release. The Rio Arriba. <laughs> the Rio Arriba man has... The Rio Arriba County man has died of being hospitalized. An environmental investigation will take place at a person's home. Look, this is serious. I, this, a man has died here. We should be taking this serious. But it's an, unidentified, and the county is just... Uh, I know it's not really supposed to be pronounced Rio Arriba, but, I mean, it's spelled... Look, look at it. Look at it. An environmental investigation will take place at the person's home to look into ongoing risk of immediate family members, neighbors, and others in the surrounding community, according to officials. Yeah, definitely. Well, we could always check that, historically speaking, uh, quarantine was one of the major measures utilized to combat the plague. And uh, many individuals that were living with an infected individual would it inevitably be locked into the house forcibly, which increased the chances of the household and the family members of being afflicted with the plague as well. Um, but it was overall meant to combat the plague by keeping it in a centralized location and not allowing it to spread any further by coming into contact with other individuals or other weird uh, freaks of nature. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention identifies bubonic, pneumonic, and septicemic as the most common clinical forms of plague. Septicemic plague can occur as the first symptom of plague or may develop from untreated bubonic plague. This form results from bites of infected fleas or is from handling of infected animals, per the CDC. Mongolian teen dies of bubonic plague after eating infected marmot. Uh, yeah, we covered eating infected marmots already, didn't we? What's that? Did you hear that? That sounds? Now this is what it's like when world ah! Boy, I sure I don't get copyright airstruck by playing that little bit of a song. Man, the concept of media nowadays is just total dog shit. Wait until we have to start copywriting telepathic waves. That'll be fun. Don't dream too hard, they'll put a price tag on it. Symptoms often include fever, chills, extreme weakness, abdominal pain, shock, possibly bleeding into the skin and other organs. The federal agency states, adding that skin and other tissues may turn black and die, especially on the fingers, toes, and the nose. 
plague activity in New Mexico is usually highest during the summer months, so it is especially important now to take precautions to avoid rodents and their fleas which can expose you to the plague, said New Mexico Department of Health Secretary Kathy Kunkel in a statement. Bless you. Yeah, you have to watch out for rodents because they can literally be anywhere. The next article is, Russia fights to stop an outbreak of bubonic plague by vaccinating 32,000 people after virus spreads from Mongolia to Siberian tourist region. Plague has been detected in the Altai Mountains for the first time in 62 years. The rush to vaccinate comes after two deaths in Mongolia and two in China. Some 18,090 people have been immunized in the scenic Altai Republic. And this happened a few days ago. Russia has stepped up vaccinations against the bubonic plague amid signs of alarming western spread of the Black Death. I, it's, it, it, I guess we could call it the Black Death. Is the bubonic plague and the Black Death an interchangeable term? I mean, is it, in this day and age, I mean, seriously, fellow plague doctors, what do you think? Are, should we be uh, allowing uh, the concept of the bubonic plague to be associated with the Black Death, which in my personal opinion has to do with a certain time frame, more or less identifying a particular wave of the infection as opposed to... This episode brought to you by The Void. Don't interact with The Void too much. It's a registered sex offender. It, it, whatever. Uh, general nomenclature aside, let's get back to the article. The deadly disease has been detected in the Altai Mountains, a popular Siberian tourist region, including an area where it has not been seen since monitoring began 62 years ago. The rush to vaccinate more than 32,000 comes after two deaths in Mongolia and two in China, which both share borders with Russia. Some 18,090 people have been immunized in a scenic Altai Republic after the spread in marmots and other rodents, announced health officials. Why do you gotta be so hateful against all these rodents? Rodents are cool. They're fine. I, marmots, I, it's surprising with this whole involvement with the bubonic plague. But hey, marmots, go figure. The deadly disease has been detected in the Altai Mountains, a popular Siberian tourist region including an area where it has not been seen since monitoring began 62 years ago. I'm noticing a pattern here where they just keep repeating the same thing over and over in this article. Oh, look at that photo. She is definitely enjoying that immunization. Hmm, the miracles of modern science. You know, back in the day, we were just, uh, leeches. Yeah, for most things, essentially. The entire local camel population of 320 beasts was also vaccinated. Warnings have been sent to local hotels and campsites. Bust out your antibiotics, folks. We're killing the plague today. I, oh, that is a photo of a man holding a dead marmot. The next article is from CNN, and it says, China seals off village after bubonic plague death in Inner Mongolia which is what was uh, being mentioned in that previous article. Authorities in the Chinese region of Inner Mongolia have sealed off a village after a resident there died from bubonic plague, a centuries-old disease responsible for killing the most deadly pandemic in human history. The death was reported to health authorities in Baotou City in Sunday, and the victim was confirmed to be a bubonic plague patient on Thursday. The Balto Municipal Health Commission said in a statement on its website. The patient died of circulatory system failure, according to the statement. It did not mention how the patient had caught the plague. To curb the spread of the disease, authorities sealed off Shuji Jinkun village, where the dead patient lived, and ordered daily disinfections of homes. All villagers have so far tested negative for the disease, the statement said. Nine close contacts and 26 secondary contacts of the patient have been quarantined and tested negative, the commission said. Damao Banner, the district where the village was located, has been put on a level three alert for plague prevention, the second lowest in a four level system until the end of the year. This is the second case. 
and first death of bubonic plague China has confirmed this year. The previous case was discovered in July in Bayanura, another city in Inner Mongolia, leading to the issuing of another level 3 alert and the closure of several tourist spots. Plague, caused by bacteria and transmitted through flea bites in infected animals, killed an estimated 50 million people in Europe during the Black Death pandemic in the Middle Ages. See, notice how that number shifts ever so slightly depending on who is uh, spilling out the narrative. But needless to say, a lot of people died during the Black Death. Bubonic Plague, which is one of the plague's three forms, causes painful, swollen lymph nodes, as well as fever, chills, and coughing. The advent of antibiotics, which can treat most infections if they are caught early enough, has helped to contain the plague outbreaks, preventing the type of rapid spread witnessed in Europe in the Middle Ages. But it has not been eliminated entirely, and it has made a recent comeback, leading to the World Health Organization to categorize it as re-emerging disease. So why is it always coming back? Well, according to this, it says the common reoccurrence is that anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 people get the plague every year, according to the World Health Organization, but that totally is likely to modest an estimate since it doesn't account for unreported cases. According to 2016 data, the possibility of plague exists on almost every continent, especially in the western United States, parts of Brazil, scattered areas in the southeast Africa, and large swaths in China, India, and the Middle East. In the U.S., there has been anywhere from a few to a dozen cases of plague every year, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. In 2015, two people in Colorado died from the plague, and the year before, there were eight reported cases in the state. In China, 31 cases of plague were reported between 2009 and 2019, including 12 deaths, according to the data released by the National Health Commission. On Thursday, Balto authorities warned of a risk of a human plague epidemic spread in the city and urged the public to take extra precautions and seek immediate medical attention if they develop symptoms of fever and coughing. They also urged people to reduce contact with wild animals while traveling to avoid hunting, skinning, or eating animals that could cause infection. Marmots! Marmots are a type of large ground squirrel that is eaten in some parts of China and the neighboring country, Mongolia, and which have historically caused plague outbreaks in those regions. The marmot is believed to have caused the 1911 pneumonic plague epidemic, which killed about 63,000 people in northeast China. It was hunted for its fur, which soared in popularity among the international traders, the diseased fur products were indeed traded and transported around the country, infecting thousands along the way. And the last little article I wanted to throw in here, which I thought was kind of interesting, was Medieval wine windows are reopening, reviving Italian plague tradition. And that's what a wine window looks like. It's a quaint tradition with a very dark history. Centuries ago, the bubonic plague, otherwise known as the Black Death, swept through Europe, killing one-third of the continent's population at the time. Originating in Asia, the disease made its way to Italy during the late Middle Ages and spread north from there. These days, we know just as well as medieval Italians that a stiff drink can go a long way to ease troubles during the global coronavirus pandemic. Thus, the wine windows, or Bouchette del Vino of Tuscany. They are just as they sound, pint-sized hatches carved into the concrete walls of urban wineries and shops where beverage merchants could serve sips at a safe social distance. First introduced in the 1600s, their true purpose went untapped for centuries after the plague. That is, until a new one came along this year. Quote, Everyone is confined to homes for two months, and then the government permits a gradual reopening. The Wine Window Association website reads, During this time, some enterprising Florentine wine window owners have turned back the clock and are now using their wine windows to dispense glasses of wine, cups of coffee, drinks, sandwiches, and ice cream. All germ-free, contactless. 
except for whenever you are reaching your hand through and you have to make contact with the uh, the person, whatever. Matteo Faglia, Faglia, president of the Wine Window Association, told Insider, people could knock on the little wooden shutters and have their bottles filled direct from the Antinori, Frescobaldi, and Ricasoli families, who still produce some of Italy's best-known wine today. You can tell I'm a, I'm a major wine connoisseur, the way I pronounce these. Mmm, yes, can you hook me up with some Antinori and some Frescobaldi and uh, some Ricasoli and just uh, mix it all together into a blender and uh, funnel it right directly into my neck. The wine windows gradually became defunct, and many wooden ones were permanently lost in the floods of 1966, said Faglia, whose historical association has begun the process of mapping these forgotten and sometimes vandalized relics throughout Italy's wine country, marking them with a plague a, a plaque to designate their import and authenticity. <coughs> We want to put a plaque by all the wine windows, as people tend to respect them more when they understand what they are and their history, he said. The Mediterranean country was hit hard by COVID-19, losing more than 35,000 of its residents, according to the World Health Organization. In spite of this tragedy, the world has witnessed the culture and camaraderie that has likely helped the country through the medieval epidemic. At the height of their national coronavirus outbreak, choruses of Italians could be heard singing in the solidarity through the open windows and on rooftops. Ah, oh, there's this fly that's bugging me. I know I smell like a corpse. Leave me alone. With a glass of wine in hand all the while. Sip. Sip. I'm fancy. That's the end of uh, Plague News. Um, if, uh, if you like it, then do things to it. There's buttons that you can click and they exist, and uh, whether or not you do it, it doesn't matter either way, because robots are coming to steal our brains, and I just want to make sure that they are happy, so they can make me a good pet before they suck out my innards with a bendy straw. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will catch up with you later. Uh, support me on Patreon, follow my Plague Life webcomic at PlagueLife.com. I love all of you, even the people I hate, and I hope you have uh, some sort of a semblance of a better 2020. <laughs> can't even. Uh, I, I know. I know. It's funny. It's because this year is literally a nightmare world. It's, uh, it's, it's funny because we're never going to wake up. We're never going to wake up. All right. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye uh, then. Stay creepy.